you're hanging out with dummies. <laughs> <laughs> People should have like I have many friends that are Trump supporters. I have many friends that wholesale believe in the Democratic Party, no matter what, it's a million times better. No matter what anybody says, and no matter what anybody says about the Biden I've family, seen a the lot Trump of, families, I've a seen a lot times of people worse. change that now. Though in recent years, like even people who were hardcore conservatives and hardcore Democrats, like I don't think whatever whatever a Republican a Democrat was represented at some point in time is anymore. Like both, no. Fast Zone News here, back with more breaking news, and today we're going to be checking out the brand new interview between Joe Rogan and Oliver Anthony. Joe had Oliver on his show a few days ago, and they had over a three-hour conversation. They talked about a lot of different controversial topics and ended up discussing Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. Oliver spoke about the division politics have caused in his life and even said which party most of his friends like. This was a really eye-opening video, and if you guys want to continue to see the latest Joe Rogan content, hit the subscribe button below. I just think there needs to be more strength within local communities as far as people making decisions and uniting with one another. And, you know, I had, I, I've had a lot of people, I'm the, I'm when an ugly ginger's walking around, like everybody's like, Oh, is it that guy? And so I've had a lot of people stop me on the street and in parking decks and at the airport and at the hardware store. And like, you know how many times I've had now I've at least a dozen times now I've had people tell me that they're talking to people they haven't talked to in five or six years that they got pissed over politics about. And mm -hmm. just this message that's coming out has given them, an, like I know a guy um, in my own personal life, he hasn't talked to his brother in six years because they disagreed over Trump yeah, and Biden. And, 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 and even prior to that, like they just left and right. And Which they, one was the Biden guy? Uh, the guy <laughs> The guy I hang out with is, because uh, obviously I like, I live out in the country. I own guns, you know, like I am the people in my neck of the woods are not, uh, despite it's what probably. they may say on. Yeah. Despite what they may say on a news organization somewhere, like a lot of the people I hang out with in the, the, the area of the country I live in is, is stereotypically red. Right. Um, because a lot of people will vote no matter. I knew it. No matter what other influences there are a lot of people will vote conservative just because of their second amendment rights which is very much under attack in virginia you know like you remember when you're out the sanctuary cities and all mm -hmm. this all the counties that decided well even if the federal government bans this we're not going to enforce it type of a thing which is crazy yeah. to see like in our time um but yeah i can't believe that any democrats thinks that they can win like anything thinking that they can take away people's guns that's like the dumbest thing you could try to do and I feel like that's what Democrats are trying to do all the time is just like rewrite the Constitution. And it's like their policies don't even work taking away guns. If you look at any Democratic city, they have the harshest gun penalties, but yet somehow they have the highest crime rates, murders. It's like these policies don't work. So stop trying to take people's guns away. It's it's crazy. And see, this is a perfect example. This portion of the country will always vote conservative as long as you're trying to take guns away so just i would i would stop trying to rewrite the constitution and that's what they want to do just overtake the country rewrite it tear it down and turn it into a socialist shit country yeah he so he voted he was a big trump guy and 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 he watched his certain news organization and then the other guy was for biden and he watched his news organization and so they just <laughs> basically picked up whatever narratives they got from each other's news and they would just you know they let that mm -hmm. destroy it literally a uh a friendship yeah they were brothers, brothers you know biological yeah. brothers and so so dumb that's uh that's not good for us didn't speak for six years just over biden versus trump disagreement and again i'll, I'll shut up after this but this is the problem with media these days it's like one side has one truth and then the other side has another truth and it's like there really aren't two truths obviously so you get one set of facts for one narrative, one set of facts for one narrative, and then they just come together every day and fight, 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 fight. Social media fight, uh, texting fight, everything fight. And like tensions are at an all-time high, and I think we're getting close to like, I don't want to say civil war, but I think, I think something bad could happen in the next year or two. But I'll be quiet now. For us, as a country, like that's... Well, it's not, it's not a wise thing to just apply to your life as a human being. You, you can have people in your life that have disagreements with you. I have people in my life that disagree with me on so many things. Absolutely on politics. Absolutely. 
you know, especially like when I was a Bernie Sanders supporter. You know, there's so many people that are like, you're a fucking idiot. I'm like, listen, I, I would <clears throat> like to try it that way. Bernie. Let's try some guy who doesn't want war at all. Let's try some guy who wants to take a certain percentage off speculation um, uh, trades in uh, the Wall Street where they're, they're doing these and they're running a tiny fraction of a penny for each one of them. And he's saying it would generate an insane amount of money that could be. Yeah, and then the money wouldn't go to the communities. It would go to just expanding the government and making it bigger and bigger. Yeah, let's just, that's their justification. If we just keep raising taxes, we'll solve all the problems. We'll help all the communities. And it's like nothing ever gets helped. It's just the government gets bigger and those same people stay poor. So it's like, God, I hate all these socialist just taxes. And it's just like, just stop. Trump had it right. Low taxes. Economy goes like this. Be applied to education. That could be applied to health care. Oh. You could give people free health care. You could give people free education. What, well, why wouldn't we do that? If you got some guy who doesn't want to divert money to these fucking forever wars and instead wants to apply it to communities, I was like, let's give that a chance. Maybe it won't work. I don't know jack shit about politics, but I sincerely believe the guy. And I'm like, that to me is at least an option for change. And that guy had been the same guy his whole life. He had been always pushing for that his whole life. He's kind of gotten tired in his later years, but that's just yeah. understandable. He's kind of like supported. Yeah, and so you the, you believing in someone shouldn't yeah, it shouldn't suspend your friendships or relationships with right. other people. Like yeah, I but guess it, that's totally. it's just you're hanging out with dummies. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. People should have like did, I have many friends. Did Joe just say that he's hanging out with dummies? That was like a shot. That are Trump supporters. I have many friends that wholesale believe in the Democratic Party no matter what. It's a million times better no matter what anybody says. And no matter what anybody says about the Biden I've family, seen a the lot Trump of, family's I've a million times I've seen a lot of people worse. change that now, though, in recent years. Like, even people who were hardcore conservatives and hardcore Democrats, like, I don't think whatever, whatever a Republican, a Democrat was represented at some point in time is anymore. Like, both, no. both, both sides have... I mean, like I said, I'm a... I love freedom of speech and I love the second amendment, but, um, there's a lot of things that I see that I don't like, I mean, you got to think I'm 31. So I was in fourth grade at nine 11. So we've been in, we were in endless war from nine 11 on and we're the same age. And, um, you know, even when we shouldn't have been like, so both sides have like just picked up on things and ran with it, but they use certain emotional triggers to like keep their fan base happy, you know, mm -hmm. like the, like, Oh, they're going to take your guns. And the other side, they've got all their emotional triggers and their things that they're trying to feed their audience with. Mm -hmm. But I guess like at the end of the day, the, it doesn't, it doesn't help either side to, to pick like, no, in my opinion, no one's, no one, no one can go into that position in politics in the white house or anything else for that matter at this point, because of how, just inefficient and how large the federal government is. I don't think anybody can go into those positions and overnight save everything. They can certainly make big influences. I mean, you saw when Trump was in office, the economy was rocking, but then other things that he did, <laughs> you know, like there's things like warp speed and all that, like that, there was a lot of controversy around all of that. And so well, he warp speed was, he would have finish. to be a vaccine scientist to even understand what they were doing. And imagine being him while, well, and this is not to defend Donald Trump, but imagine being him and being in control of all of it. You're in control of the economy. You're in control of foreign relations. You're in control of the biggest military the world has ever known. You're in the public eye. You're tweeting about your ex-girlfriend being horse face. <laughs> like it's like. Yeah, and imagine COVID coming in. And what would you do? They give him so much shit for the way he handled COVID, the way he handled COVID. He did more for COVID than anybody's ever done. He he had the warp speed, which I know a lot of people don't like, and I, I have never personally done it, and taken the uh, buzzwords you can't say. Um, but the vaccine was a good thing. I'm not for the mandates of a vaccine, but think if Joe Biden was in office or Hillary Clinton or Obama was in office. There would be no vaccine. There would be nothing. We probably wouldn't have even locked down. The only reason they took that so serious is because we were in an election year. And they were like, Trump, this is the way to get him, to make him look bad. Because he was looking so good, they were like, oh, COVID, we need ventilators now. And ventilators were actually, like, killing people. But what did Trump do? Trump had, like, GM making ventilators. 
You think Joe Biden would have had GM making ventilators? Absolutely not. Trump had Trump said ships to to New York for COVID patients to go on the ships. Cuomo refused to use them. Instead, he would just lock old people in their houses to die. So I understand that Trump gets a lot of flack for warp speed, but it was also really good that he was able to just have it come to life and, and produce a vaccine because no one else would have been able to do that. Trump was the only one that locked down. Trump was the only one that took a lot of precautions during COVID. And then Biden came in and tried to take credit for the vaccine. Meanwhile, he was saying how terrible the vaccine was during the debates. It's just crazy. I understand he gets flack for warp speed, but it was a good thing at the end. I'm not for the mandates. Yeah, I don't think one There's person so can do it. There's so much shit going on in that guy's life. Do you think that he had the time to investigate the efficacy of the COVID vaccines that were this novel mRNA technology that never never been applied to hundreds of millions of people, and that you had to trust the CDC and he Fauci and all those people? Like, how could he know? How well, could and, that's, anybody and know? that's and that's a good example of why I don't think that one. I don't think we can we can or should rely on one person to save all save us on all those issues it's something we've got to work oh, out on a personal level you know well it's insane it it was invented back when people lived in tribes so you had a <laughs> tribe of 50 people you want that old guy he's got a lot of scars on his face he knows how to run shit he knows what to do wrong he knows what to do right he survived all of his brothers died you know like those guys are the guys you want teaching younger people it's like you were talking about with older folks that more. was the whole idea of a tribal leader like this was the greatest warrior this is the smartest artist chief this is the person who's until technology came now the older people are the dumber people unfortunately unfortunately as far as technology goes but older people are very wise yes but in this day and age where you got drone strikes i think i think it's smart to have somebody maybe like 40 to 60 like they can lead us and they want nothing but good for us because they love us because they know us but i don't know you he don't know you. None of them You don't care. know. He don't know you. He don't care. He just wants to get up there and says, say his speech the right way, and then they give him ice cream, and then he sits <laughs> down. Like, and then, did you see that <laughs> woman who's the White House press secretary? And now, I don't know if this is true, so we should find out if it's true. Did she or did she not accidentally delete a Biden tweet from her account? So it was a tweet as pres. When I ran for president, I this and that. Oh, like she, and she accidentally yes, posted it on her. She own. accidentally yeah. posted it on the wrong. I want to find out if that's true though, because that could be Russian disinformation. Because <laughs> that's true too. Here's one of the reasons why free speech is so important in this country, given the parameters of social media, is because we know that foreign interests are interfering with our discourse. We know it. It's proven that there's troll farms they have in Macedonia I'm sure they have them in China they have troll farms where people create accounts and then they argue with people about stuff mm -hmm. and they'll post links to fake stories and so they'll post weird, fake dude. information they may even post fucking AI voice swap shit tearing down the United States from within essentially that's what I mean that's what TikTok is honestly they just feed us dumb stuff dumb stuff dumb stuff but then the kids in China, the algorithm that is uh, promoted to the Chinese kids is like accountants and like biologists and like bettering yourself. And then the United States is like twerking and, and, and rap songs. And it's just like Cardi B. It's crazy. But what they're doing is trying to get people arguing about stuff, trying to get people mm -hmm. to diminish their faith in democracy, trying to get people at each other's throats from the right and the left. It's manipulated. And it's think real. about who that benefits. Investing in America means investing in all of America. When I ran for president, I made a promise that I would leave no part of the country behind. So she did do it. She really did tweet wow. it from her account. Is that real? Oh, my God. <laughs> so she's right. Oh, my tweet. God. She really did do it. Jesus. Crazy. Oh my God, that's so crazy! So of course, when you read his tweets, it sounds like her. Like she's mm -hmm. got a very politician way of doing it. There's, she's like an <laughs> AM radio DJ, an AM radio DJ. Well, that's version. her job, right? Like she she's terrible. She doesn't answer a single question. She's probably the worst government official I have ever seen in my life. Just out of everybody. She's only there because she happens to be a lesbian and she happens to be a black woman. She covers three of the Democrats' hot words. She's the first ever this, this, and this. Great. 
Does that mean she's the best or even qualified? No. He's version gotta, of what a, a press secretary is. Yeah. Like a politician. Because, you know, hey, I'm all right. Here we are on the drive. I'm Mike and I'm with The Rock, you know, or whatever. With the fucking sidekick. And maybe that's what attracted people to Trump. And maybe what attracts people to, like, um, see, like, thank God I haven't. Especially now, at least I've got a good excuse not to keep up with politics anymore because I've got a few other more important things on my plate. But I think that's what attracts people to like that rough, raw, authentic type of speech. Like it's not clean cut and it's not professional, but it's at least like you said, even with Bernie, which who knows? I don't know anything about Bernie, but uh, he's not polished. But at least what he's saying yeah. is like at least you feel like he actually like at least he, believes he actually it. believes it because you know it's, it. you look at poli- you can look at politicians over a 15 year span and and like they'll quote something from like oh good god think anybody any politician from the 90s is going to have a lot different opinions on emotional triggers that we talk about today bro politicians from the 90s from the democratic party sound like <laughs> totally nazis different. yeah they sound like nazis there so was this what, like, crazy, what does that tell when you, you biden know? passed right. the crime bill in 94 there's this famous speech that he gives about locking people up so that his wife is safe and so that oh, yeah. they're safe yep. and that I'm yeah. safe. And it's this, it sounds like right ring, like a proud boy speech. It's fucking great. <laughs> yeah, Joe Biden is the most racist guy ever. If you're black, if you have a trouble deciding between me and Trump, then you ain't black man or son, whatever he said, dude. And then he's been with like the KKK, uh, David Duke, Joe, the Democrats are the racist party because they make all the assumptions about communities. Conservatives don't make assumptions about communities. Democrats label communities and make assumptions about communities based on the people that live there. Easy. It sounds like a p- patriot speech. No, like what you worry again, about militia saying. I don't. I don't. I know very little about any of this. But my understanding is even I know for sure with Hillary Clinton. But I think even with Obama. Originally, their stance was very much against gay marriage, and then yes. it flipped around. She didn't support gay marriage till 2013. Yeah. 2013. No, so, crazy. like, how can Bro, those... pass them cigars. You're going to bust out your first cigar ever Yeah, so this podcast. is exciting. Uh, so, like I said, a fan gave me these at a show. But, yeah, so that's, that's a... Th- so that's where the clip ends. Once they open the cigars, it basically... Uh, they change topics completely. But that was cool to see him opening up about politics a little bit. You can tell you can tell that he's probably about I'd say like 85 90% he's conservative just because of guns, where he lives, his values. I mean, without a doubt he's conservative. You could tell the way he talked about Trump there too. He definitely likes Trump. Um, but yeah. If you guys like the video, make sure you hit the like button below. Leave me a comment with what you thought about these two's opinions. If you agreed with what I had to say or you disagree, Please also leave a comment. I love to read them and answer them. And hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. And if you do that, please turn on the uh, bell notifications. Because why not? You'll just get notified whenever new content comes out. Uh, So yeah, thanks you guys for watching. So that's going to wrap up the coverage of this clip. And as you guys can tell, Oliver's most likely a conservative. But I want to know what you guys think. Are you going to vote for Donald Trump or Joe Biden in the upcoming election? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And as always, I want to thank all my viewers and all my new subscribers. And if you're not already subscribed, hit the button below to gain access to the latest news and content seven days a week. And this has been another edition of Fast Zone News. Peace out. Waste my life away. Drag back home and drown my troubles away. It's a damn shame what the world's gotten to.